a great person to be with and a really very valuable friend to have love you love you sarita thank you so much well, i think this is the this we are having a conversation that's more important for the audience than introducing me thank you so much for being with us and i am really happy sharda jain madam is with us can you share the cv of sharda jain madam so that i can put a few words though it's a ma'am i don't i don't want cv I That's even it. I don't want. I don't want. Don't just put a Sharda Jain Madam ka photo lagao. Bas and let me speak a few lines, and we'll start a thought process between you and me. Uh, then it's a really sincerely how to praise you. It's a really a tough thing, Madam. I am telling you, and you have joined today. It's a really I am really ple uh, happy, and you exemplifies the true meaning of the excellence. I know you, and you have demonstrated the unwavering commitment to the excellence and consistently going beyond. anything like many more expected in the way you work the way you do the way you put things the way you tell people it's a really unbelievable you're a true leader and sarita and myself will agree that we are you are a role model for all of us you possess a remarkable combination of madam number one is a skill you have a talent and you have a dedication for the subject that's another very important point and you strive for the perfection and you never never allow us to be anything less than the best and contribution into the obgyn everybody knows extraordinary and significant breakthrough in the many more things madam so i am not going to make it a list out but many things everybody knows about you you do with the heart so many classes so many things so many teacher teaching mentor for many so madam just a we'll have a simple conversation a sharp crisp one and in between sarita is also there with us for next 20 minutes and we can share and do many things so today's our topic is the conversation between us is regarding the hpv vaccine the cervical cancer and so many and the simple simple things are left in a idea between how we can teach people learn simply this is my idea of the tuesday tea time at least they should have some take work message when they go back home it should not be like only the take home message it we need a take work message when they do a simple thing so madam can we start on this a uh, ground about it the first and the foremost question which always everybody feels at what age that someone can be infected with hpv it's a very basic questions maybe for the layman maybe for the obgyn or maybe for the many extraordinary doing work also and for the all the practicing obgyn students should know at what age a someone get infected with hpv i bring greetings uh... from delhi gynecologist forum to all of you who are watching me and kavita and the rest of the people uh, cervical cancer mukt bharat is not my uh, word it is the government of india mission and i th i think uh, all of have to really start thinking about it you asked me a great question how common is the hpv and what age we are infected with hpv now the hpv in this particular country is incidence is around 6 to 7% and that makes it huge number huge number and what we find is that adolescent and young adults if they are not vaccinated against hpv vaccination almost 80% yes you've heard it right 80% will get infected with hpv so that's uh, the extent of things are there and that's why it's a big menace and it has is need, need to be prevented by giving them vaccination and this is what uh, it's all about yes ma'am yes so you mean that the uh, 80% can be get infected but uh, how does they acquire the infection and basically how we can prevent them from getting infected that's a very big thing see there are many ways uh, the way the hpv is transmitted basically it is sexually transmitted virus so in majority it is sexually transmitted virus and it is the skin to skin contact during the close relationship that one gets infected right. the other can be perinatal which is very little but it is there it can be fomites and sometime in the inoculation site of injections you know sometimes it can be infected but it is mainly sexually transmitted virus virus and mainly by the skin and skin contact so 
So it is not only the penetrative uh, sex, it, it can be without penetrative sex also, the close contact with the skin can give rise to this particular infection. True, madam. So that, but the point comes when we, we talk about the cervical cancer and HPV, when we connect both the things, we know sort of variant of the HPVs are related for the uh, precancerous region for the um, cervical cancer. But what do you think, madam, how commonly of these countries women are getting screened and is it easy to make common crowd to understand what HPV is? And the most important point is, uh, do we need more and more awareness programs are required for them that what this uh, HPV is, how to be screened, how to make common? These are the few points which I think important for us to teach. Dr. Dr. Yeah. Yes, there are three pillars of cervical cancer prevention. The base is the vaccination. It's Correct. a broad base. Correct. One thing is very clear that if you take vaccination alone, this is our ICMR study often quoted outside, that if you just give a vaccination to any population, the load of the cervical cancer will come down by 50%. So you asked me a screening question. Now, as far as the vaccination is concerned, it is 0.1%. Yeah. 0.1% of the population is vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So less. Now coming to about screening. Yeah. These are government of India figures. Not anybody is giving. Government of India figures of 21 is 3% people are screened. 3% mm -hmm. people are screened. And when we talk about the screening at the global level, we have 2013, which all of us know about the screening thing. Then 19 came and the WHO finally said that the woman should be screened. Leave aside this global screening program. She, the woman should be screened in her lifetime three times. By 35 years of age, 71% people should be, 75% people should be screened by 40 and 45 Another two th things, if you do it, then probably we will not be missing out invasive cancer in her. And 3% uh, screening rate, it means a long way to go. 0.1% is a vaccination rate, is a long way to go. Yeah. And not more than 5% people have cryocotry machine or thermal ablation or colposcope in this country. I'm talking about 40,000 gynecologists in this country. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. So the bad, you according to this, all the 0.1% uh, vaccination, 3% screening, and you are talking about the 5% people are having... And 0.1% uh, also, Madam Mukta Vita Ji, 75% vaccinations are given by the pediatricians. Correct. The gynecologists have been the greatest demotivator as per the vaccination program in this country concerned. That's a reality and that's a truth. Right. That's really true. That's a really sad situation we can call this. And the awareness is really in a very bad position, but long way to go, as you have said it. Uh, but the, the worrisome point is, it's really, it's very common to have HPV in this country. The incidence, you can say, is it <laughs> that much common? Or we know that cervical cancer is a really the biggest second number third threat to the us. And the incidence of cervical cancer and the major studies have been here. It is six to seven percent of the people in this country have HPV infection. So much. And good. this amounts to 21 crores. As far as uh, this particular disease is concerned, we all know that a big thing. Low grade lesions. 80% will disappear. It is said that by 30 years, there's an elimination of viruses from our body. And as far as women are concerned, they clear out much more than the boys. The clearance in a woman is to the tune of 70% by age 30. And in boys, it is only 40% are persistent. In 60%, it is persistent and 40% it is, it, is, it is clear. So the boys yeah. or the men folk are the big reservoir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they are the ones who, who infect us time and again. I, and I always uh, say that whenever we have sex, we invite another new virus. Correct. So that's a fact of it. Correct, correct. And we all know that the HPV is responsible for the cervical cancer. 
But madam, how long it takes even once the patient is having the HPA positive, how long it takes the cervical cancer to develop? See, like for example, I have, we have done the screening of some few patients and we have found this, this person is having the HP. When we know that they sometimes they go back and they are become having no HPV again in a status of this. So we are worried, madam, how long it takes that the cervical cancer to develop in the in the patients of or the in the females we can say or the women with the HPV virus. I think at the outset I must make it very clear as for the cervical CIN one is concerned, yeah. the invasion risk is one percent. In CIN two it is five percent, and CIN three it is good from thirty to eighty percent in the yeah. lifetime. Yeah, so CIN three is something dangerous. It is seen that in three to five years time after 30 years, once the virus is persistent, is give rise to cellular changes in the epithelium. The virus, the DNA of this virus is going to combine with the DNA of the cell, then only starts creating mischief in the cell. And it takes minimum time, even if it, with the HIV background and things like that, it takes about three to seven years for cancer to appear, but the roughly it is seen it is at 10 years, but it can be as late as 20 years. And that's the reason that follow-up is very much required and that also for 20 years. So whenever you, you diagnose a CIN1, you wanna put a stamp that you require a follow-up for, for 20 years. So this is what I think each one of you who's listening should know about it. It is a long drawn process. Even if one is clears, sometimes it can come back uh, the disease. So this is what uh, the things of follow-up is very, very important. So the correct follow-up and everything. Um, uh, Sarita, any point regarding this, that the cervical cancer development, anything which you want to put or we can uh, communicate with Dr. Sharda Jain regarding this? But I'm just asking a few points and then you can also add. Uh, Madam, uh, the problem with the Mukta Bharat, cervical cancer Mukta Bharat, there we are having so much struggle and so much achievements. What do you say, Madam, being practicing, preaching, telling people, and doing so much work in this field and though you are the one of the key persons who have started this a way or long back and you have given so many guidelines and so many things for regarding the cervical cancer mukta bharat to this so do you think what are our struggles and what are our achievements regarding this matter so i think i will just show you the contrast yeah the contrast is the western word they start a screening program in 1940 yeah. And today they stand that 70% of the incidence of cervical cancer has come down and 80% of diseases due to cervical cancer have disappeared. So okay. they have been working since 1940. Yeah. And now you see the people who work with Angrezo, Dr. Sahib. Yes. Hats off to them. They will do one job and Now once the vaccination has come in their program, the Australia is on the verge of getting declared as cervical cancer free. And by 2030, many European countries will follow. And where are we? We are dispel. 0.1% of our vaccination rate, 3% of our screening rate. Hai. WHO gets that, and now the government of India is trying to say 90% people have to be vaccinated. We pass a name to be our adolescent cooker. So the other day, when those government people had come, 30% load of vaccination we will take by vaccinating adolescent girls in the school. Only the girls and not boys. Correct. 30% load leading, 70% load. You have to motivate people to take the vaccination from their own pocket. Now, as for the screening part is concerned, the sophisticated liquid-based cytology, mm -hmm. the sophisticated HPV high-risk DNA test, it's beyond. Yeah. It's beyond this 85% of the people. Aap jinka kar rahe ho upper class or middle class ka. Us mein bhi 3% hi hai. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Abhi aap ko is cheez ko the put. We all know that HPV high risk DNA pehle of this 15 virus based test is the ideal test. But we all know the present government is not going to import anything for screening from outside. It has to be indigenous indigenous and indigenous and sure. it, for that it will take two years we will yeah. have a covid kind uh, antigen test which can be the report will be there instantaneously in one minute time you'll be able to do it the test will be here it will be indigenous of this particular country but it to my mind it will take two years 
it yeah. will take two years. Until that time, we have no other option. It is VIA and the village. Yeah. If you combine together, if, we, if I find VIA to my mind, you know, the gynecologist can be certain only to the tune of 50%. But when you combine with Billy, it is 100% sanitating can be there. Not only doctors, gynecologists, but even ordinary MBBS doctors, nurses can definitely have a clarity. And now they have very clarified, you know, depending upon the WHO has said, government is following that particular program. See and treat is in the camps. That means it is in the villages and in the slums. Uh, if less than half is involved, go ahead. If you find there is a discoloration is there, go ahead and, and do a cryocortical thermal ablation. There are a batch of nurses who have been trained even in thermal ablation. Uh, and once it is more than half of the cervix, they have to come to screen and treat clinic, which will be manned by all gynecologists. Every gynecologist who's listening, we have to own a call they have to own a cryocautery and they have to own a thermal ablation. The other day, there is a smart scope has come. This is VIA. Then you take a photograph, then Billy, take a photograph, and then 26 cases in my clinic. We were not. It means they don't have any. Absolutely. I agree with you, madam. Hello. Yeah. Four were red color. And the rest were amber color. And for which I asked, what is this scope is going to cost me? He says, 9 lakhs of rupees. Are bhaiya, we will buy 2 lakh mein sabko colposcope in 2 lakh. We will do thermal ablation in 3 lakh. And in 10,000, there will be a cryo-cottery machine. So, who will buy so much money? But for that, the gynecologists are not ready. Correct. Without equipment, you will not do screening. You will not do it. You have yeah. to equip ourselves, and that will be motivation. I always say the government has spent four crores of rupees to make you a specialist. Yeah. And if we have a simple way, we will be able to do it. investment, we can't screen our patients. As far as my road is concerned, I feel screening may VIA really karenge. I've been trained at PGI Chandigarh. We screen 100%. The people who have worked with me know it very well that perhaps we have to take them to medical college. So 100% screening. If people like me can do it, I'm sure everybody can. Do it. it is only the commitment for your patients. Yeah. Yeah. And secondly is, whoever comes to your patient in the clinic, mein aayega, 90% लोगों को vaccination देना है। अगर हमारे जैसे लोग दे सकते हैं तो सभी लोग दे सकते हैं। Only I, I only thing is it's only here। आप यहाँ resolve कर लोगे everything will be possible। uh, Madam, it means that you you just put a point that the number one is the commitment, number two is the screening, number third is the training of the infra this uh, healthcare workers at the uh, when it's a, to the unreached area also. And number four, the infrastructure is very, very important for the screening because of each and everyone whosoever at the last point or the person who is at the uh, receiving end at the last stage. And that's very, very important. I think uh, uh, um, Sarita will also agree with many more points about your journey about the cervical Mukta Bharat, the, the ways, anything else which she wants to put, she can. And I'm really proud uh, that uh, I'm not introducing a mother, Sarita Bhagirav herself is a very big entity. But as being Dr. Usha Saraya has done so much into this in the field of cervical pathology and everything. So I always feel that uh, this is another big thing. So, uh, Sarita, any points which we want to ask Madam regarding the cervical Mukta Bharat, which she has already covered about the commitment, the screening, the reaching to the end person infrastructure and the, and the and, uh, training of the healthcare workers and 100% screening is must when we should be, even in the medical schools and the students should do in a medical VIA oh. bill ki 4 rupees ki cost hai. Correct. Kar sakte. Yes, yes. Ek rupees ki test hai. Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Sarita, over to yeah. you. Yeah. 
uh, uh, thank you, madam. I was really listening to that, and I really agree with you that we have a long way to go. And I think they're eagerly all waiting for Sarvar Act to now be released. It'll be a much more affordable, do you think? And uh, you know, uh, the implementation and all will make a big difference. What is your view? I think you know, Sarvar Act is going to be game changer. Bia and Billy is also going to be. And here, I just wish to tell you, anybody who's listening to me. They were supposed to start on the 8th, that is uh, on the 7th April, WHO day, the program in the schools. I know for the homework which has been done in Delhi schools, uh, it was told the government had ordered five, five crores of vaccine initially. So in the meantime, somebody in the ministry said that, you know, you have not floated such a huge amount you are asking. You have not floated a global tender and the government will be caught. So they uh, took a decision. Key. We will postpone it. We will call global tender in the uh, end of April and first week of May. And then we will, uh, six months delay will be, will be there. So those five crores of vaccines have hit the market on 8th March on the Women's Day. Yeah. Amit Shah was uh, there and he released that thing. Now they are already flooded the market. Now, this vaccine is available in the NAM fuel, which has got two vaccines. So now the onus is on the gynecologist, the onus is on our pediatrician that this gender neutral vaccine is a, our own vaccine, world class vaccine, robust data as far as data, uh, things are concerned people have to, it is there in the market. Pediatricians ke liye bhoat yeh chhi baat hai, it is said 9 to 14, whether boys or girls, only two doses. Sarvavag says it is two doses for boys and girls between 9 to 14 years. After 14 years, for boys it is there up to 26 years, then they have to take a three vaccine. For, for uh, girls, more than 14 years, we all, already know it is three vaccination. As far as the bivalent vaccine is concerned, it is not going to be available in Indian market anymore because at the factory level also, they have brought down the uh, you know, production to a significant way. So bivalent is out. As far as nanovalent uh, Gardasil is concerned, I think you know, as far as its uses for women are concerned, only very few people are going to use it. This is, so it means only Gardasil 4 and Savavac. And I feel our vaccine will have an edge the only thing what is required is WHO SAGE recommendation, which came in 22. They found that in 117 countries where national immunization program was on, the second dose was given only in 13% of cases. Got it. WHO target of poor countries is there, will never, never be met. So they asked the expert group to scrutinize the data the people who have got vaccine, whether the 16 and 18 efficacy is there for 10 years. In yes. this, the India has contributed significantly because you all know that in Andhra it was started, Tamil Nadu it was started, and then because of the media ruckus, you know, it was stopped. And that particular data showed that 10 years efficacy is robust. So right. they said, Ki, now it is for the government to use two, do two dose, karna chai, two dose, de de, one dose, karna chai, good enough. Now, this means Gardasil 4 is already there in a play. Yes. yes. And as far as Sarvavak is concerned, it is there in the experiment we do like six years. Now the pediatrician asked me the other day, Dr. Sir, sit down. We all sit down and say, we will give one vaccine. If you give one vaccine, then it will be done. But somebody, somebody, people have to sit down. 25 on the other side, pediatrician, 25 on this side, and say, whatever they, the people who have watched very closely this particular vaccine, they should be able to say, I'm sure it's going to be game changer. But now the decision has to be there uh, by the government whether two doses they wanted or one doses they wanted, but the specialist bodies have to come forward, act it fast, so at least one dose is given. So in that particular way, we all know that uh, uh, government knows how to take uh, the vaccination at what cost, but they are committed to take care of the 90% vaccination for adolescent girls up to 14 years. 
So the rest depends upon us. Now it has flooded the market. Now people have to see how gynecologists are charged and they use this vaccine. Correct. Yes, you are right, madam. Actually, the all the time previously, the worrisome part of the cost Number two, the, the availability. And number third, it was the awareness was a really a big problem previously we have seen about the cervical vaccine. And it's a really a dilemma between the gynecologist as well as between the pediatricians. That's whose domain is this. But I think that adults and girls should not be suffered. They should, the, the vaccine should be given as you said. And the one oh, dose yes. is also very, very common. And the recommended vaccine is really good. So, uh, Sarita, are you going to comment something so that we can conclude the session? I think we have... Yeah. So, yes, madam, uh, I think it's been a wonderful discussion. And I really think that we have a long way to go, but a lot of headway has been made. And uh, I'd like to just say a few things. One is that, you know, we must tell everybody that HPV is a uh, transient infection and almost 90% of uh, women will clear it in the first year or the second year. So there is really nothing to be worried about, even if they are HPV positive and cervical cancer is a rare outcome of a very common, uh, very common condition. So I think that is the one message. And I think Madam has beautifully brought out the role of visual inspection, which I think all of us as gynecologists must do. It's yeah. very, you know, our rooms are now so dark because we are focused on our transvaginal ultrasound and this and that. But a simple speculum examination, as Madam said, will really go a long way in uh, the prevention of cervical cancer. I think these are the only two points that I'd like to make. And it's been wonderful. Uh, I just wish to tell you in the last is that as far as the cervical cancers are concerned, now the government says deaths are between 60,000 to 72,000 per year. The maternal deaths in this particular country, in the total India, it is 25,000. It means cervical cancer deaths are two and a half times more than the total maternal deaths in this country. So my Request with the folded hands to all gynecologists, all doctors, all nurses, please come put your hands together. Correct. Vaccination is must. Correct. Vaccination is must. Secondly, screening is you have to get friend friendly with VIA and Billy. I'm sure a person who can learn to do Vardines, who can learn to do simple hysterectomy, who can learn to do cesarean section, which is VIA and Billy is no difficult. And yeah. I'm telling you, Thermal ablation and cryocautery, nurses do beautifully. Why will doctors not do it? Only they have to equip with themselves with the machine. Thirdly, is that little controversy as for the treatment of precancerous lesion is concerned. CIN1, CIN2, there's no controversy. Use cryocautery, it will do the necrosis up to the depth of five millimeter, thermal ablation to the depth of seven millimeter. Whatever you have, you, take, you do it. But as far as the CIN3 is concerned, now there is a large data in a public domain from England that they, fought, they didn't leave therapy for everybody. They found that in 10% of cases at the end of five years, the disease was as it is. In CIN2, it was in 15%, the disease was as it is after five years after leave therapy. And after CIN, the CIN3, after leave therapy, the disease was there as it is in 50% cases. So that Angrez professor where, where I attended his lecture in Salzburg, madam, after paying four lakhs for two hours program, he told that conservative treatment for patients where follow-up is the issue should not be done in case if they have completed their family. Because the median age to have cervical cancer is 38 years. So aapne conservative treatment ko push nahi karna hai. But many experts feel that hysterectomy will too much uh, treatment oh, and yeah. we, sh we should learn uh, ablative procedure like LEAP and all. We should be, we'll be able to learn. We should be able to learn cone. I think, you know, that's a very small uh, portion of CIN3 uh, patients are concerned. And I'm sure uh, the experts will sit down and they will thrash it out. What is the treatment like? Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. That's all the insight which you have given today. Basically, the screening and the cervical vaccination is really the very important components. And we need some potential future developments which we see into that. Number one is we need improved screening techniques. Number two, we need a personalized screening 
either by the infrastructure, it should be good. And the simple, the way you have told, same with you have talked about the, the uh, therapeutic way of putting things are in a simpler manner, but not by a very expensive thing. We need an expanded HPV vaccination program, which is going to come and we are really happy for that. And in the future, we think the therapeutic vaccines are also going to take place over there because overall ongoing research over, about this is also not only the screening, the detection, the vaccination, but the therapeutics is also needed for the vaccination. It's a promise over there. So thank you so much, Adam. Adam, we also always love the way you put your videos, the way you put your things and the way you make things move. So we love you for this. And thank you so much for joining. It's a Tuesday tea time. Stay tuned always in the next few more topics, few more things in the future so that we can teach people simply few things and they can take work message. Love you, madam, for us today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.